20 past the hour, live look at the White House. Welcome back to Morning Joe. Joining us now from Washington, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist and associate editor of the Washington Post and MSNBC political analyst Eugene Robinson. Eugene's column today is on Obama's novel definition of hostilities, and he writes in part this, Obama, with uncommon disregard for both language and logic, takes the position that what we are doing in Libya does not reach the hostilities threshold for triggering the War Powers Act, under which presidents must seek congressional approval for any military campaign lasting more than 90 days. An intellectual president such as Obama should be able to lead a search for answers to these tough questions as soon as he gets a better grasp on the definition of hostilities. Okay. Gene, you know, it's one thing. I, 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 I've been surprised by this. It's one thing if you're uh, George W. Bush and you ask your lawyers what they think and they come back with a novel definition of something that doesn't pass, pass the straight... Uh, face test, but mm -hmm. if you are a constitutional law you professor yourself, yeah. uh, it, it makes this conclusion, at least to some of us, even more troubling. Yeah, it's 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 actually ridiculous. I mean, this is this is an administration that's usually kind of earnest, and they try to you know do the right thing, or at least um, uh, recognize reality. Uh, but here, you know, they're not hostilities in Libya. Well, you know, blasting uh, uh, targets with drone aircraft, that's hostile. And uh, it, providing support so that Allied bombers can try to take out Qaddafi, that's hostile. These are acts of war, and it, it's just kind of ridiculous to say that they aren't. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, 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 it kind of troubling, but also um, just weird for this president. Well, it, it's strange also, obviously, this president not talking to the Pentagon, because the Washington Post is reporting today that soldiers and airmen involved in this conflict are receiving imminent danger pay. And the Post reporting uh, that they're getting an extra $225 a month for troops who fly planes over Libya or serve on ships within 110 nautical miles of Libya's shores. This is obviously a war. Uh, it is obviously hostilities. And it is obvious that this president is following the tradition, sadly, of Republican and Democratic presidents alike trying to skirt the Constitution on basic war powers. Yeah, the, the Constitution says Congress is the, is the branch of government that can declare war. And so presidents have long ignored that. That's why the War Powers Act was passed, uh, to, to put in kind of a fail-safe. More than 90 days, you've got to ask Congress for something. And, you know, frankly, most presidents come up with a better excuse uh, mm -hmm. than this one. Uh, they, they, uh, they come and ask for some sort of authorization or some sort of resolution or some something. Uh, and, but for some reason, the president doesn't want to go to Congress and have a discussion that I think we, we ought to have. I mean, this is a, this is a, the, we're, we're in Libya to predict civilians. We're not in Syria. We're not in Yemen, except we kind of are. Uh, it's it, it, we need to talk about this stuff and, and figure out what is our theory for for uh, the military involvement in, yeah. in these sorts of situations. No and we're not having that discussion. And Gene, it seems to me that a question we asked on the very first day of this war remains unanswered, which is, what is the precedent that's being set here? If we're going to Libya to defend people, we heard uh, Senator McCain on Sunday saying, you know, Qaddafi was at the gates of Benghazi, a city of 700,000 people. What would we, would we have said to ourselves if those people had been slaughtered and we'd done nothing? Well, you could say the same about the people who are being shot in the streets of Syria, for example. So this feels like a conversation we had a couple months ago, but it's completely unresolved. You know, we did have the same conversation, <laughs> Willie, a couple of months ago. It's still unresolved. Uh, you know, you, 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 why are we in Libya and not in Syria? Here's another question. We we we, we kept um, Benghazi from being wiped out, but it's now a long, dragged out, protected, uh, protracted civil war in which people are being killed every day. At, at what point do, do those things balance out? At what point do you do you cross a line and say, well, gee, you know, we've had more 
more civilian casualties over time than, than perhaps there would have been in that initial awful massacre. And it's, it, it's so, you, you know, you can't weigh those things as, as exact equivalents, but it's something to, to think about as we decide whether to commit our blood and treasure uh, to, to, uh, to a foreign involvement. And just, um, I, I guess, in an attempt to be transparent here, and I'm wondering, Jonathan, Joe, mm -hmm. Eugene, would this conversation have a different tone if the president was a Republican? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> George w. I'm just wondering, because we're like... They're tearing up the Constitution. Yeah, Dick I mean, Cheney I, is putting it through a paper shredder, and they're setting little kids on fire. Yeah, of course it would. Yeah, no, it just seems question. like we're... It seems, it seems awfully docile, but um, seems yeah, like a... when George W. Bush did such things and had such tenuous conservative... Uh, our tenuous constitutional theories right. propagated. Uh, or tenuous evidence. It, it, was the <laughs> end, it was the end of the republic as we know it. So there was a, a there was a but there was a cumulative impact under, under Bush. Though. Well, but we're mean, talking you know, about was, a cumulative set time. of events <laughs> right was, now. Next time, time, Gene, after you'll be time angry. After time. Yes. So, Go ahead, John. Um, yeah. Well, the, Gene, I wanted to ask you. You know, there are Republicans on the Hill who are talking about yanking the funding. Mm -hmm. um, from the Libyan operation. One, will they succeed? And two, has any Congress ever done that? Yank the funding from a military operation? Yank the funding from the troops? Uh, they will not succeed. As, as I recall, I believe Congress did, toward the end of the Vietnam War, actually pass a, uh, 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 actually kind of defund um, uh, a, a uh, possible new deployment. But um, it, it won't succeed now. John Boehner uh, and the House leadership seem to have little appetite for uh, for going forward with using Congress's only real power, which is the power of the purse, uh, mm -hmm. to to stop this deployment or to, to bring the the, um, the troops home. And uh, in, in the Senate, Harry Reid has already said, uh, the Senate Majority Leader, that he supports the president. So it's it's not really going to go anywhere. Uh, I think at, at, at most, but can't we have hearings? Can't we talk about this? Can't mm -hmm. we call the administration up the Hill and, and have them answer some of these questions I mean, that we've it, been asking it, yeah, for a couple it, months? It is nonsense, isn't it, Gene? It is absolute nonsense. To, again, let's go back to point number one. And people probably should be a lot more upset about it than they are, that this president is claiming that the United States is not involved in hostilities when we killed several civilians just yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and look, the, the, the fig leaf is that this is supposed to be a NATO operation. Well, the idea of there, there being a major NATO military operation without the United States uh, involvement, logistical support, surveillance, intelligence, that without the United States providing essentially the underpinning for the whole operation, it's ludicrous. It doesn't joke. happen. It can't possibly happen. NATO, uh, NATO, that's part NATO of the problem with NATO. Leaf. It's basically yeah. us and, 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 you know, the Brits and the, and, and the, and the French and, and others, uh, but we're the, we're the foundation of NATO. So that, that simply does not pass the straight face test. All Na right. NATO is a fig leaf that the United States has pulled out for some time. Uh, Bill Clinton did it uh, in the Balkans, mm -hmm. and George W. Bush did it regularly, and now, of course, Barack Obama is doing the same thing. At the end of the day, it is our troops that are fighting, our troops that are dying, and our taxpayers who are paying billions of dollars to prop up Europe and the rest of the world. Eugene, thank you. Your column online at WashingtonPost.com. Take a look. Thanks, Eugene.